Good evening. This program's Media Watch, The Last Word. Sounds like an MA thesis, doesn't it? And I'm Stuart Littlemore. Each week, this program will look at the performance of the journalists we rely on for our information and at the people who run our media. Our feature tonight is trivialising by the Queensland Press of the Merthyr by-election and our guest is the Courier-Mail's editor. But we'll begin, as we shall most weeks, with a review of the media's performance in handling the major news of the last seven days. Sydney footballer Paul Hayward has returned to Australia after ten years in a Bangkok jail to rekindle the checkbook journalism conflagration. Hayward was a Mr Small in a foiled heroin importation from Thailand. With his Australian co-accused, he became a familiar media face during his trial, appeal, imprisonment and the news 18 months ago that he had AIDS. Upon a promise of early release, TV networks were thrusting exclusive contracts through his cell bars, literally. They only succeeded in reviving the knee-jerk demands for unworkable legal prohibitions, which happens every time crims are paid for their stories. Remember the love boat prostitute Virginia Perger, perjury for money, she claimed. And payments to Barbara Barlow, mother of the executed drug courier. And the paroled, then deported, whiskey a go go murderer James Finch. He finally confessed, but retracted it, blaming a newspaper's unsigned check. You're a strong man, Mr Finch. Why be pressured yes. into a confession for a crime you say you never committed? Because they were talking about big money. To a greater or lesser degree, all our media pay criminals or their families for exclusive stories, the ABC included. Those we asked about it had the same response. In principle, they said, we disapprove. However, they said, each story is assessed individually. Two bob each way, in other words. The Chamberlains are the epitome of the dilemma. No law is going to cover extraordinary cases. But Paul Haywood is no Lindy Chamberlain. Still, the Nine and Seven networks fought for his exclusive. Seven's tabloid thunderer, Darren Hinch, tried to preempt a deal. I'm not responsible for decisions that are made in network newsrooms around this country, but if a financial deal has been made or is made between this network and the Haywards, I want no part of it. It didn't work. Next night, Seven's news director bought a new tie and went on the box. The real point is that the story is valid, needs telling, with or without money. Hayward's story has had all the telling years ago in court. The untold story is, who was Mr Big? Who put you up to it? Now that could justify Seven's thousands of dollars that Bob Johnson said they paid. This is what they got. All right, I could have given names to people. But when people asked me for names, I told them the truth because the photos they showed me, I didn't know them. Hardly value for money. Hinch, too, wasn't impressed. Paul Hayward, you can go to hell. I'm Darren Hinch. We know. We know. One dominant national story has been the Sydney police shootings. It peaked at the weekend with the death of one of the detectives. It's a tragic story, and the media have emerged from it with little credit. The state premier, among others, criticised the media for paying insufficient attention to the dying policeman. Been, in my view, an imbalance of treatment on this subject, and let me say I'm quite angry about it. Far more valid, in my view, is a charge of racist attitudes. The Sydney Morning Herald, which holds itself out as a quality paper, did very poorly. It had preceded the story with this spread on an aborted attempt to pass a dud check in a Sydney bank. Graphic treatment of a constable shooting at a stolen car in busy George Street, unquestioningly and uncritically reported on page one. By Anzac Day, any possibility of a disapproving editorial evaporated with news that a brown-complexioned man had shot two police. The paper made no mention of a series of raids on Aboriginal homes during the week, and on Friday, the Herald really botched it. The Sydney Aboriginal community was outraged yesterday at the fatal shooting of an unarmed Aboriginal during a police raid. Did the Herald reporter really mean to say that only Aborigines were outraged? And was the killing of such little significance that it merited only a single column? Serious and racist inferences are inescapable, as Granny Herald obviously realised. The next day's coverage was a make-good, complete with artwork. Incidentally, in writing their stories, we find TV news sub-editors reveal twin prejudices, racism and willingness to denigrate victims of crime. 
Even in death, the black victim didn't rate the courtesy of Mr. Gandhi. Aboriginal protests as the inquest into the Gandhi killing begins. They're demanding an independent inquiry into Gandhi's death. Claiming it will never get to the bottom of Gandhi's death. Suggesting Gandhi was shot after challenging police. You see what we mean. Back to the Herald on Saturday. David Gundy's criminal record was trotted out to contradict his family. The Herald has information that Mr Gundy had a more extensive criminal record than that. It includes two convictions for dishonesty as a juvenile and at least two convictions for dishonesty as an adult. So what? Does it somehow lessen the reprehensibility of his death? And by the way, the Herald's access to such information was quite improper. Police records are confidential, especially juvenile records. Two media clichés. You can't believe everything you read in the papers, but the camera doesn't lie. In Brisbane, the ABC and Nine filmed a stun grenade raid on a house with a man apparently arrested. But the arrest was a fake. That was a policeman under the blanket. Police gave a series of explanations, including blaming the presence of film crews. But the most artless was that it was to show the media that police have a sense of humour. We'll stay in Brisbane for tonight's feature, coverage of next Saturday's by-election in the seat of Merthyr. One candidate has become the darling of Brisbane's print media in particular. He's Jerry Bellino, a former illegal gambling boss seen here arriving to give evidence at the Fitzgerald inquiry into corruption. This lovable rogue has appeared standing on his head, in a bubble bath, drinking champagne and inviting people to lunch. Former policeman Nigel Powell, being anything but trivial, hasn't merited the attention of Brisbane's media, although he's running as the anti-corruption candidate. Although Powell's whistleblowing to the media helped set up the Fitzgerald inquiry, his campaign launch rated only seven paragraphs in the Sunday Mail and was virtually ignored by other outlets. I'm disappointed more than angry. I think, it's, um, I think it shows how the Brisbane media has played its own part in um, getting the state of Queensland to where it is at the moment. Uh, 20 or 30 years of corruption, the Brisbane media has played its own part and it's showing that it hasn't learnt any lessons itself from what's come out of the inquiry. Bellino is expected to poll no more than 1% of the vote and the general public isn't taking him too seriously. 12 minutes past nine, good morning. Yes, Trudy, you're with uh, Gerald Bellino. You're really con the fruit, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a joke, isn't it, Jimmy Norton? Well, I don't know. Uh, now, are you con the fruit, I'm sorry, but uh, I think you've just been a bit rude. So would you please welcome candidate, politician, would-be politician, Jerry Bellino. <laughs> Apart from radio, he's managed to attract national TV time, including the Ray Martin show. The Democrat candidate, John Brown, is also less than happy with his lack of column inches. Earlier complaints brought this reply from the Courier-Mail's editor, Greg Chamberlain. Although I understand the reason for your complaint, the facts of life are that the Australian Democrats do not influence the policy of the state government or the alternative state government. And here is Greg Chamberlain, editor of the Courier-Mail, Queensland's major newspaper. Now, Greg... There has been, without doubt, trivialisation of the Merthyr by-election occurring in this climate of trying to rebuild confidence in Parliament. Is it a fair charge to make of you and your paper that you haven't become part of the solution, so you're still part of the problem? I agree that there has been some trivialisation. The length of the campaign itself led to that propensity. But uh, I certainly don't believe that there's been um, trivialisation of the principal issues in the campaign. But so far as you're concerned, the principal issue is who can win. And it comes down to, doesn't it, Libs, Nats and Labor. And everybody else really isn't a goer. That's right. And because they're not goers, and tell me if I'm not being fair to you, because they're not goers, they're sideshows. Well, they mightn't be sideshows. Some are sideshows. Some are side events. Bellino's a sideshow and Nigel Powell is a side event. It would be unfair to say that Mr Powell hasn't had coverage. Mr Powell uh, would probably feel that he hasn't had the type of coverage that the major, the major party candidates have had. Well, he hasn't, and, and given your druthers, he wouldn't get it either, would he? We have to be realistic. And Powell can't get elected. That's the ultimate reality. 
that's the reality. One prominent English weekly is now being reprinted here in Australia. No, not The Spectator, not The New Statesman, but Sunday Sport. A sport-free, believe-it-or-not encyclopedia of sleaze and what the vicar did. Tycoon had rubber lust. Giant sprout from outer space ate my pal. Sunday Sport does, however, make a frank assessment of its readers. How true. Can there really be room for palm sleaze when we're so well provided with Oz Grot? We have homegrown the picture, I married my dad and had his baby, people, dad makes necklace from girl's hacked off leg, different dad presumably, and the truth, not forgetting the Australasian post. Sunday Sport, fully imported from the street of shame, starts its second edition with a falsified photograph of the Duchess of York and goes downhill from there. Who needs it? Good night, we'll see you next week.